think about this scenario. Tomorrow lunchtime I send you a text and this is what it says word for word. Hey, I'm in Trafalgar Square. You'll never believe it, but Jesus is here. It's amazing. There are hundreds of people crowded round, but he spends just a few minutes with each person. A word of comfort, a touch, a smile, some encouragement or advice. There is an atmosphere of such joy, and everyone he meets seems utterly transformed, as if a huge burden has been lifted from their shoulders, as if they have found a peace that they have been looking for all their lives. You can see it on their faces. Quick, he's sitting at the bottom of Nelson's column. You have to come down now. So you know what question I'm going to ask. Do you go? Honestly. Honestly. If it were true, would you go? And don't just say naively, of course I would. Or actually, would you text me back saying, OK, I'll come later if I've got time. Or, sorry, I've got an essay to write. Or, thanks, but I'm not really sure I'm interested. And the reality is, if he were truly there, I don't think that we would all rush down Tottenham Court Road to meet the Lord. Because it brings to the surface so many questions and ambiguities that most of us have about our faith. And what's my evidence for saying this, for being slightly hesitant? Well, the evidence is the practice of confession. You know what we believe about this beautiful sacrament. You know that in confession, Jesus Christ is waiting there for us in the ministry of the priest. Not in Trafalgar Square, but in every one of our Catholic churches throughout the land, including the chapel here at Newman House. You know that he wants to touch our lives and transform them. To give us not just the forgiveness that is promised by John the Baptist in the Gospel today, that's certainly the first gift of confession, but to give us far, far more than this. To give us peace, consolation, healing for all that's gone wrong, joy, and a sense of purpose and direction that we will never ever find unless we hand our lives over to God completely and ask him to walk with us. <coughs> Jesus is there in the sacrament of confession and yet very often we walk past him. That's my evidence. And there are so many reasons why we don't go to meet him. This is my list. I gave a similar list a couple of years ago. It changes depending on, I guess, what I'm going through. But these are some of the thoughts that can flash through my mind. Maybe they've th flashed through your heads as well. When you're thinking about going to confession, but there's just a little maybe. Don't hold your breath. It's a long list. Right? Have you had these thoughts? I'm too busy. I'll go next week. I haven't really done anything wrong. It's been too long since I last went. I'm not quite ready. What will the priest think? Maybe he'll tell someone. I'm too ashamed. My sins are too big. My sins are too small. My sins are unforgivable. My sins are not worth forgiving. What's the point? I keep confessing the same sins and nothing seems to change. I've forgotten how to go. I've forgotten what to say. 
I'll come back when Father Smith is here instead of Father Jones. I can say sorry to God without going to confession. I'm not sure if I really believe. Now I can feel a tension in the air. You're afraid that I'm going to analyse all 17 reasons on this list and we're going to be here for another three hours. Well, don't worry, I'm not. And I'm not going to analyse them because it probably wouldn't help. There are so many reasons not to go to confession. And if I shot down every single one of them, one by one, carefully, if you really didn't want to go then you would find an extra one. So instead of analysing, I just want to encourage you. Of course God forgives us in different ways, and we can pray to him and ask for his help wherever we are, and we should. But when we're struggling with life, as we all are, with sin, with failure, with confusion, there is no more powerful way for God's love to touch our hearts than by going to confession. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. He wants us to be free. Or as St John Paul II wisely pointed out in a different way to quote, the worst prison would be a closed heart. The worst prison would be a closed heart. And what he wants in confession is for our hearts to be set free. Or again, Jesus says elsewhere in the scriptures, I have come so that you may have life and have it to the full. How often do we feel that something is missing from life? We long for peace and a new sense of purpose. And we can only find this if we truly hand our lives over to God. If we stop pretending that we can solve everything by ourselves. If we let his mercy touch our hearts. And this is what happens every time we come to confession. What better way to begin the year of mercy this week than to let God's mercy touch our own lives so that we can get on with the real work then of sharing his mercy with others. So don't be afraid. Don't get too complicated. Just believe that God wants to bless you in this way and make a decision to come. In that sense, it's easy. Be brave. Pray for God's help. Spend a few minutes in preparation. We'll give you a sheet after Mass as you leave to help you. And then just come. The priest will help you with everything else. Some things you can't understand unless you've experienced them. Trust me when I say that coming to confession will change your life. You won't regret it. Let me finish with two testimonies. The first is my own. I made my first confession when I was 19 years old because I wasn't brought up a Catholic. So I was received into the church and did my first confession and first communion when I was 19, just before going to university. It wasn't easy. Now don't worry, I'm not going to tell you my sins, but let me just say, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of stuff piled up by that stage in my life. And to be honest, I didn't feel much consolation afterwards. I knew I'd done the right thing, and I knew in my head that I was at peace with God, and that was a kind of consolation. But it was hard. But over the weeks and the months and the years, just as you come to know someone gradually over time, I have come to know the power and the beauty of the sacrament. 
Sometimes, for me, there have been small, unexpected graces given to me. A word or a prayer that has helped me through the week in a simple way. Sometimes there have been personal crises, big ones, and I have been absolutely desperate to put things right in confession. And I've rushed there as soon as I could. And the sense of relief and gratitude afterwards has been indescribable. Such a gift. And nearly always I've received a quiet sense of peace and consolation. The strength to move forward and the knowledge that God is with me. Hearing his promise and his reassurance. That's my experience. But the second testimony is from a young woman, your age, who came on a retreat earlier this year that I was helping at. Now this isn't confidential. She posted it online on a feedback page in March. So I'll take the risk of reading it to you. Let me finish with her testimony and I'm reading this word for word. She says, I experienced something so wonderful this weekend. I was at a reconciliation and healing service. Confession was going on around the room. Now I hadn't been to confession for a number of years because of fear of what the priest and Jesus would think of me. I wanted to overcome that fear, so I made the brave decision to go to confession. Over the years, I have always tried to be perfect, but I was reminded in confession of the words of Jesus. I came not to call the virtuous, but sinners. This is Jesus' way of saying to me, I don't expect you to be perfect. I felt Jesus speak to my heart and he said, I love you and I forgive you. Go in peace. When I came out, I felt like the world had been lifted off my shoulders. That is how God speaks to your heart. All we have to do is listen. If there is anyone who has not been to confession, I really would urge you to go and allow God to speak to your heart and give him the chance to stretch out his hand and touch you. And she finishes, I was afraid, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> 